Pentax ME Super. Super. This is one of my favorite cameras, uh, just given the nature of its size. It's one of the smallest SLR builds. It still shoots 35 millimeter. It's almost measurable in size to the Canonet, in spite of the fact that this is an L SLR and this is a rangefinder. Let's go over it really quickly. So this is the, the same body um, that the MX, MV1, the ME, and the MG are all based off of. Cameras like the MV don't offer a lot in terms of functionality, which is a, it's a great little beginner camera, I believe. The MX is all mechanical. It has a very unsatisfying shutter sound, if you ask me, and they're incredibly expensive. The ME is getting there. The ME is like the light version of the ME Super, obviously, because this is the Super. And the MG is always broken. The rewind knob on the MG, I've never seen one that's actually working. So I would not touch an MG with, you know, a 10 foot pole or whatever. So ME Super, um, basic operations, advanced lever. Um, here you have your mode selection. So you have an auto. Um, up at the top you have L, which is lock. So moving that over to auto, there's a click. That click would be this little white notch jumping up. That means it's kind of like locked in auto. So in order to switch that, you need to push it down, move it down to M for manual, 125X, or B for bulb. There are two um, mechanical speeds on this camera, which is I think what sets it apart from a lot of other SLRs out there. You can operate this proficiently without batteries. So you can fire it at bulb, or you can fire it at 1 1 25th of a second, which with the X is also the denotation that that is the flash sync speed for this. So if you're shooting flash, you wanna make sure that's set at 1 25. Now we have M for manual. Okay, great, you can select your own shutter speeds. Well, how do you do that? Very simple, with these two buttons here. So this is the up, this is the down. Uh, there's blinking LEDs and they move up and down. When you're shooting at a speed that will be underexposed, the, there's a red dot on, it says under, and that will be blinking to show that it's underexposed. And then when you're shooting overexposed, it's the same thing, but on the top it says over, and that will be blinking. And then there's a, a little green dot that will be slotted on M, indicating you're shooting on manual. And then the LED will switch from green at the higher speeds, which I believe is above 60 and above, the LED is green, 30 and down to four seconds is a yellow. Great range of shutter speeds. You have a thousand down to four seconds, obviously bulb. If you're shooting at auto, you just have the one LED and that will move up and down, selecting the different shutter speed that it uh, picks for you. Over here, you have your exposure compensation. So right now I'm just shooting at one. You can move it either way here. And then when you do that, there is a blinking red light up at the top to indicate that you are adjusting the compensation of the ASA. To adjust the ASA itself, simply just lift up on this little slot here and you can move it either which way. It goes anywhere from 12 all the way up to 1600. Over here, you have a, a sync cable, and then in the front you have self-timer. Yes, finally. All you have to do to charge that is move it over, and then kick it up, and then it'll run the little gears in here, run at about a 10 second frequency, And there you go, that's that. Obviously there's the hot shoe up here. The little X has a little holder right here for whatever film stock you're using. I got this and the guy had a gold 400 in it. Now the bottom is particularly interesting to me because um, these are essentially all the same bottoms in all of the cameras, but each one is a little different. This one in particular has three screws. These two are the same size, this is a smaller one. 
This is your advanced system, so you unscrew this if you have an auto winder here, your three contacts for that. And then the battery is right here. And to get the battery out, again, just take a nickel, unscrew that. And this takes two of the LR44 1.5 volts, like that. And then as it indicates on the lid here, the negative side is up, so positive side, which is this side, is down. So yeah, let's pop open the back. And here we have a, a copal shutter system, which is uh, similar to the ones used in the Nikons and stuff. So as you can see, it moves up. Easy enough. So <clears throat> to load film, we'll take our test roll, which is right here, indicated by the words test roll. Load that into here. And then basically you have this little system here. And what's great is you just, you literally just slot that in right there. And then we'll take it up that. There's a little dial right here. You simply click that, lift that up, wind it up, good to go. Up on the top, you have your frame counter here. Other things to note, um, right here, this system is what measures the uh, aperture of the lens. And sometimes these are a little crusty dirt gets in here and stuff after you know years of either being used or not being used so I always just check to make sure that that's operating perfectly fine just toss a simple 50 f2 on there and this has a filter on it but point being is this is a really small build this is a very compact camera and again I'm gonna bring up the rangefinder because on paper, rangefinder should be much smaller, but still, I mean, this is, obviously the rangefinder doesn't stick out as much because the entire shutter system is still in here, but like, it's pretty comparable. There's really not a lot that can go wrong with these. They're reliable. They have a lot to offer, but it's still simplistic, easy to use. And I think for that reason, this is like one of my favorite cameras to release the lens. There's a, there's a little lever right there turn that good to go so great camera they're usually very affordable emmy super also comes in black i have a black one somewhere and also sometimes they have brown leather and people dig that pentax emmy super super
The other thing that these have is it has um, a completely magnetic operating system. So underneath this component here, something called a main switch. And so basically what happens is the light comes in through here, it registers to the cells on either side of the viewfinder here, and then that computes with whatever input you're getting from here and then from your ASA here, and all of that registers over to here and selects the shutter speed you should be firing at, or if you have it on manual, it also registers the shutter speed you selected. And then it will determine whether or not that's over or under based upon all the other components. But sometimes uh, the magnetism of the main switch is out, and so it basically just will not work. And that could be by virtue of it sitting for too long or just by overuse. And I can't really determine what, you know, what the causation of that is because, you know, these are old, there's so many variables at play. It's just, again, um, kind of common freak things about these. Normally, though, there's going to be a lot of other things wrong with the the body. Like, you'll notice, like, clear scuff marks. I have this top here, which you can see is just kind of molded and corroded over. And believe it or not, this camera did not work, you know. And this camera looks pretty good. There's some dust and stuff that needs to be cleaned off. But for the most part, it looks good. And it works fine because, you know, the person took care of it. 